Hi, Bernard. Hi. So in this, in this video, uh, we are doing a pre-cluster check, right? So we are doing a cluster validation using PowerShell, and then I think we have a look at it, right? Uh, yes, that's the plan. So uh, there are diff different possibilities how you check your cluster. We can do it uh, with PowerShell. You have to have, you have to know a bit about the uh, different scenarios that are tested, and we can do it uh, with uh, failover cluster manager from another system. Mm -hmm. uh, we will do it with PowerShell, but I want to show you something in failover cluster manager that some people don't know. So here I have opened the failover cluster manager on another server. So mm -hmm. Azure Stack HCI doesn't have a GUI. We have to do it on another host. So I can go here to validate configuration. And notice this is a 2019 system. So this is not Windows Server 2022. It's a win right. Windows Server 2019. We will come back to that when we create the cluster. So then we can um, give it the nodes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm lazy. I do it this way. <laughs> I just change. Uh, the numbers and now he finds all the nodes perfect mm -hmm. so and then we have to decide if we want to run all tests or only specific tests and the normal choice would be all tests of course the problem is all tests is not all tests <laughs> all test is cluster configuration, Hyper-V configuration, inventory, network, storage, and system configuration. You maybe notice there is nothing with storage spaces direct here. And right. the assumption that storage is storage spaces direct is uh, unfortunately not true. So let's go to run specific tests. And you see here the same um the same scenarios are selected. So storage is selected, but storage spaces direct not. So yeah, if the you reason, do your cluster, yeah. yeah, what's the reason, Bernard? Well, I, you know, I, I think, you know, failover cluster manager has been around for some time now. So storage spaces direct was added later on. Um, so um, maybe it's because still a lot of people think that they would use a classical fiber channel storage, um, which needs yeah. to be tested instead of um, a hyper converged exactly scenario, but yeah yeah so the storage here it would be you have a sun storage with iSCSI or fiber channel or sas and uh, that's a default scenario and storage right. basis like is so different from a sun that if we would take uh, storage basis direct I, I assume we would get a lot of errors and uh, yeah so and there was a choice to make but i want to show this because i think a, a lot of people assume that yep. all tests include storage basis direct so okay. we go back to our um, PowerShell, mm -hmm. and here you see these tests. So I have cluster configuration, Hyper-V configuration, sorry, um, cluster configuration, Hyper-V configuration, inventory, network, system mm -hmm. configuration, and storage basis direct. And um, now it's depending. If, if we would have a German operating system installed, mm -hmm. then these scenarios have different names. So the okay. PowerShell uh, command let would be the same. It's always in English, but the scenarios would have different names. So be aware, in English, we have different names to German, or I assume in other languages, it's the same. So what do I do here? I, I specify the four nodes I want to test in a variable. Mm -hmm. Let's put it here. So in dollar nodes, we have now Okay, not it's not paragraph notes, it's dollar notes, right? Mm. Where is my dollar sign here? So there are the servers, and then I choose the test. Copy, mm -hmm. and let's do it. So now it will test all the scenarios. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we even have a progress bar for this, right? Yes. Um, and um, yeah, the output will be a little bit difficult to consume on this node, right? So mm -hmm. um, probably as this is a GUI-less system and you may have run cluster validation tests before, um, then you already know that this is going to be an HTML file, which we won't open on the node itself um, as we don't have a browser to watch it, right? Uh, so 
I think you are remoting into the system and grabbing the report and trying to exactly. visualize it from there. Okay. Yeah, maybe it would be possible to install Edge or Chrome or another browser on Azure Stack HCI, but I, I wouldn't do that. Uh, I, I'm, I like to have a clean installation. So we will look at the file from our uh, Pika PowerCourse VAC, VAC machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but first let's let it do its magic and create a validation. So, um, why is it important to have a validation? Mm -hmm. and Bernard, the, do you know the, where, where, where I'm going? <laughs> yeah, I think um, if you ever want to have Microsoft support, um, this is the first question that they are asking you, um, right? If you say uh, you have an Azure Stack HCI system, they want to have a valid a cluster validation report. And if there are reds in there, um, it's not good uh, in order to receive support, right? So, yes, um, so uh, you are so, so so polite. If there are reds in there, errors, <laughs> you don't have a valid cluster. And um, so so this is no joke. We have three states like, like a, a traffic sign. You can have a green report, you can have a yellow report, and you can have a red report. Green means everything is fantastic, you are good to go. Mm -hmm. uh, red means there are errors in there and don't create a cluster and don't use it because there will be problems. And if you have problems, you, it's your fault because you did a validation. The validation report clearly states this is not supported, don't do it. And if you do it anyway, mm -hmm. your problem. The the thing between is yellow. So yellow are there are some warnings and warnings. We have to look at the warnings and decide: Do we care about them? Are they important? Are they not important? Uh, there are sometimes some warnings that are not so important. For example, not every system has has the same patch. If the patch that is not the same is a security patch, the defender patch. You can mm -hmm. go on. If the patch is one system is at uh, Azure Stack HCI level uh, of the installation file, the ISO, and the others are patched, please install the patches and do the cluster test again. Yeah? You have to decide. So now we are done. And you see here, the test report is at a pass in my, in my personal um, directory and mm -hmm. even in a hidden directory, app data. So I will copy this, go to this host here. Mm -hmm. We were here, you remember. Mm -hmm. Open an explorer. And I have prepared already the U UNC pass to the system so I can add this here. And I have to delete the C yep. colon. And now I can open the file. Okay. So. So this is our cluster uh, validation report. And the good thing is it seems to be a yellow one. Green would mm. be better, of course, but it is yellow. So we have warnings. We see here, these are the five uh, categories we have tested. Mm -hmm. uh, Hyper-V configuration was successful. Inventory is successful. Storage basis direct is successful. And system configuration is successful. Mm -hmm. We had one more, but this is an old one and was not tested. And we have in network, we have a warning. Mm -hmm. So the others, we don't, we don't have to look into them. We can do that, of course, but we don't have to. But at network, we have to look. So we click at network here. Mm -hmm. And now we uh, are in the network category and it's tested multiple different things here. And some are green and some are yellow. Mm -hmm. So the validate cluster network configuration is yellow. The validate IP configuration is yellow and the validate switch enable teaming configuration is yellow. We already know what it is, but uh, we, go in, we go in it anyway. So it might not even be three individual problems, but you know one problem that impacts the three the three areas, right? Which were really like in our scenario, yeah. right? Yeah. So here he says you have mm. a management adapter uh, that is RDMA enabled, but SMB client uh, is does not view the adapter as RDMA enabled. And we had that mm. before in one of our videos when we said get net adapter RDMA, this virtual adapter was shown, but it mm -hmm. can't do RDMA. So this is clearly an error or, or not okay. So mm -hmm. we will disable RDMA on this adapter. I already prepared that. So, but let's look at the other ones. Mm -hmm. 
right? RDMA is for our virtual machines, but uh, and more important for our storage, but not required for the management traffic, right? Exactly. Right. Okay. Here we see the same management OS right. has RDMA enabled. Best practice would be is it is in, uh, it is the same basically the same problem here. Right. And let's look at the last one. Mm -hmm. And here we see the management switch, of course. We have mm -hmm. also, again, something with RDMA. We will fix mm -hmm. that. But there are also problems with the compute switch. And the compute switch is the switch with our Mellanox 25 gigabit cards. And we enabled mm -hmm. RDMA there. But he is not able to look at the hardware adapter. So he said maybe there is a different uh, Hmm. Okay, so, so guess what? It's interesting because the storage adapters, which also have RDMA, don't show up here. Yeah. The only difference, I mean, okay, besides the fact that it is a different model, right? So you have Connectix 4 EX and Connectix 4, um, is the fact that the compute switch is going through via the set switch, right? Um, yep. Yeah. And the other ones are connected directly. Okay, yeah. they, they, I have, yeah. I've seen this problem multiple mm. times. I think yeah. uh, the validation test can't get to the adapters the data, through the yeah. set switch. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I would ignore it. It's it's uh, fortunately yeah. it's only yellow, not red. So mm -hmm. uh, we will fix the RDMA thing, and then we will do another validation. So going okay. back to our host, I have already prepared it. So we there is the possibility to disable RDMA on another adapter. Mm -hmm. You see it here. Mm -hmm. yeah. We will do it on all four nodes. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it will accept our dollar nodes. So let's see. Otherwise, I, I have to <laughs> specify the different nodes. We okay. will lose uh, our uh, um, RDP connection, but it will come back. Because, because it's the connection, you know, it's the you're modifying the connection which are cu you're currently using, right? So that's exactly. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And if you disable or enable RDMA, you will lose a connection temporarily to the host. Mm -hmm. So we see okay. that now. Okay. But um, it will come back, hopefully. So the idea is to do the setting and then rerun the test and then see if something has changed, right? Exactly. Okay. So we will okay. do that now. And uh, we have to wait for another two to three minutes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it is fast on these machines, uh, no doubt, but still, <laughs> it still it takes a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, the more important uh, thing to do a cluster validation is, in my opinion, not that your cluster has support. If the validation finds errors, yeah. fix them. Don't install a cluster on a system where the validation says, oh, uh, we have tests here and they, they say it's not okay. So maybe you used um, storage devices that are not capable for Azure Stack HCI. They have, to, they have to fulfill some things. For example, an SSD or an NVMe has to have a data loss protection. Mm -hmm. If that's not the case, don't use them. By other ones, I, this is hard, of course, or if it says your network is partitioned. So um, the cluster validation will also test if every network card in the same network can communicate with each other. Mm. And if that's not the case, mm, fix it. Yeah. Um, and I have done, I think, thousands of cluster validations in my uh, in my life, uh, because we, we install clusters all the time, and it happens that I do something wrong. I know what to do, but I, I it happens that I have uh, errors there. So I always validate and I fix the problems. Yeah, I, I'm happy that the validation is there. I know what I'm doing, but sometimes you do errors. Yeah. So what would you recommend? I mean, if you if there is a, uh, I mean, later on, if you do have a, uh, the cluster set up. I mean, you can do the validation over again, right? So if something yeah. significantly changes, maybe you need to add an additional node or doing something else, or um, you you have issues um, because of uh, something else, uh, then you can always do a cluster validation, right? 
Yeah, and the cluster validation, there was a time when you did a cluster validation with ZAN storage and you right. had already ZAN storage, you could get into a problem that your VMs couldn't co uh, communicate, but that uh, is fixed and uh, normally you should uh, you should be able to run your cluster validation while the cluster is working. Mm -hmm. And there is an idea in, in Microsoft that you do your cluster validation every day automatically. <laughs> so that the system recognize if if something changes. Yeah? Okay. So you can do it anyway. And if your cluster validation is too old and you have a support call, Azure Stack HCI has a not so expensive support option. Um, we mm -hmm. maybe talk about that later. Um, but you get a, a, a not expensive support. And if your validation is a year old, they will get want to have a new right. validation anyway. So. Right. Um, yeah, and it only takes a couple of minutes, so that's uh, yeah. a, a good a good habit, I would say, right? So I will do this again here. Now open the new validation, mm -hmm. and hopefully we don't have uh, we have still a network something. And now we have only one. So mm -hmm. the IP and the cluster network color uh, was fixed. Mm -hmm. We still have, I think, the compute switch that he can't communicate. No, he can't communicate with the management switch uh, to get the RDMA mm -hmm. technology because they, the cards have don't have RDMA anyway. And mm -hmm. I think he can't communicate through the yeah. compute switch. And I think that's the same problem here. He doesn't yeah. see the adapters and can Inter interpret if it's correct or not. Yeah? I think you know if all of our devices report device default, then you know uh, I would assume device default is the same setting for all of the adapters. Then uh... I think the same. Okay, yeah. so this is our validation. In the next video, we will create our cluster, right? Yes. So let's go there.